If you're looking to set up triple monitors and beam MG, you've come to the right place. Now I'm gonna show you how you can achieve this and make sure that your triple monitor setup is set up as well as it can be given the restrictions within BeamMG. Now I would note that the best thing to do is to use Nvidia Surround, but this does include some version of a native support for triple screens. However, it does need a little bit of tweaking. We're then also gonna look at how to set up things in Nvidia Surround, how to calculate your field of view, and also how to measure your triple monitors. And then we'll dip into looking at the user interface and how to tweak it to make sure all your gizmos and gadgets are exactly where you want them on your screen. So sit back and buckle up, we're gonna set up BeamMG. Now, just to make you aware, there will be some repetition from my other triple screen setup videos, as I wanted all of these instructional videos to be a one-stop shop. So if you don't need a section, please skip ahead using the chapter markers below. Setting up NVIDIA Surround. As I mentioned in the intro, the best way to set this up is using NVIDIA Surround or AMD Ifinity. If you wish to do this natively, we will cover this later in the tutorial. First, you are going to want to go to the Start menu and open up NVIDIA Control Panel. Here, you are going to want to click on Configure Surround, select Span Displays with Surround, and then hit Configure. This will open the Setup Surround window, and at this point, you must note the order of your screens. Here, they are displayed in large white numbers. Working from left to right, they are numbered 2, 3, and 1. Now click Enable Surround. The screens will go black while this enables. At this point, drag the monitors in the display window into the correct order you noted before, 2, 3, and 1. Now click Apply to order the screens correctly. Now we need to correct the alignment for the bezels, and this is done with these two figures. This is done visually from where you will sit, so increase the numbers until it looks correct. For me, this number sits at 44. Once this is set, click Apply again. The screen will once again go black as this sets. Now go to the Resolution menu and select Bezel Corrected Resolution. Make a note of this now. Once selected, click Apply again, and then Surround with Bezel Corrected Resolution will be enabled. Calculating the correct field of view, FOV. To calculate this, we are going to need some help from a free online tool available at this address. I will put the link in the description below. Once opened, you will be presented with this window. Here, you can adjust your parameters to obtain your desired field of view. For me, I wanted to make sure that all of my peripheral vision was covered, so I aimed for 180 degrees. Firstly, make sure your screen size is set to 16.9, and then input your screen size, minus 32 inches. Select triple screens from the drop-down menu. You will then need to input your bezel thickness. I'll show you how to measure this later in the video. You can then play around with your distance from the screen and see the required monitor angle to achieve your desired FOV. In my case, I felt that a 60 degree angle would work well with my room and a distance of 62 centimeters away from the monitor felt comfortable. But you can play around with these figures as you desire, but once selected, you must stick to them. To better understand this, let's look at this on a diagram. To achieve a 180 degree field of vision, my eye line needs to be in line with the most proximal edge of the monitor the circle here illustrating my head. My screen size is 32 inches, adjust this for your own size. The distance from screen is the distance from my eyes to the panel monitor. To achieve my required field of vision, I need to be 62 centimeters away, give or take. And finally, I must make sure that my triple screen angle is set to 60 degrees. This angle will differ for yourself depending on what you got in the tool. Here, the angle is taken from a line drawn from the back of the middle monitor to the angle formed by the back of the left and right monitor. Here, this is written in pink. To measure this practically, you will need a digital angle measure, or in this case, a set square that has an angle measurer on it. Make sure this is lined up with the middle of the monitor when viewed from the top as illustrated here. Repeat this for the left and right monitor and be as accurate as possible. How to measure your monitors. Measuring up is relatively easy, and we need to take two further measurements. Firstly, we need to measure the monitor's total width. Finally, we want to measure your bezel's width. This is the distance from the outermost portion of the monitor to the start of the image on your monitor. Here, mine measured 0.7 centimeters. Setting up using NVIDIA Surround, the best way. 
When you boot up BeamMG, you're going to be met by this screen. Click Options. We're then going to go to the leftmost monitor. We've changed display. Now we're going to head to the Display tab located in this menu. Click it. Once in the display menu, you want to make sure that the display mode is set to borderless. You can use full screen, but for me, I feel borderless works the best. You'll notice that the resolution is set to your corrected bezel resolution, and you want to make sure that you click enable multi-monitor render. Here you'll be given the options to change and select your field of view for your center, left, and right monitor. Now what you want to do is take your total field of vision and divide it by three, and that will basically give you the individual field of vision for each monitor. In my case, 180 degrees divided by three is 60 degrees. The monitor borders FOV in degrees, which you can see here, I've set to zero. This we don't need to touch because our bezel corrected resolution corrects for the bezels, so we don't need to do this. Once done, click Apply Display Settings and head back into the game. Setting up natively without NVIDIA Surround, the alternative way. Now, if you search triple screen setup for BeamMG into Google, you're met with this page from the official BeamMG website. Now, if you follow this to the letter, it ultimately doesn't work. And there is a link to another YouTube video just below where if you click that, you'll also see a comment from somebody saying, this doesn't work. And here's why. Again, I'm gonna stress doing it this way is less than ideal, but I'm gonna show you anyway. Now, before we start, you wanna make sure, obviously, NVIDIA Surround is turned off. Then from the main menu, head to Options. Now, for the sake of argument, we're going to follow exactly the online FAQ and set this display mode to borderless, exactly as they instruct. We've enabled multi-monitor render, we've set our triple screen values to 60, and we've applied the display settings. Head back, and then we're gonna head into the game. Now, this isn't going to work, but there is a workaround. As you can see here, the game does in fact natively render three triple monitors. However, it's all squidged up and compressed on one central monitor. Now, if you keep this to boardless, I can find no way to expand this. However, you can do it if you go into windowed mode. Setting this to full screen is also not helpful because it doesn't give you the resolution that you need to expand the monitor across your three screens. Here I'll show what happens when we hit apply display settings with full screen. As you can see, when we select resolution, it gives us no option to select our larger, what would be bezel corrected resolution if we were using NVIDIA Surround. However, if we set this to windowed and apply display settings, we are now given a window of which we can stretch and play with. Of course, put in the same FOV values that we discussed before. Just an example of how to stretch the window, you take the windowed game onto your leftmost monitor, you put your mouse on the edge of the window and simply drag across. And now you have a well-adjusted field of vision set to your FOV values. However, you do have the windowed border on the top and also the Windows menu on the bottom. And for me, I just can't tolerate this. Optimizing the user interface for triple screens. How do I move the speedometer? As you can see, I've got the speedometer nicely at the bottom right of my main screen here. To adjust this, hit escape, head to UI apps, and then what we're gonna do is head to the left monitor. We've changed displays now. Head to edit apps. Once this is clicked, you're then gonna be able to move whatever apps you've got on screen to wherever you want along the monitors. Here's some examples of me doing that now. Let's head back to the center monitor. For example, if I want to remove the speedometer and resize it, simply drag it, move the mouse to the corner, drag, shrink, and you can hide this while you're in the cockpit as well by clicking the checkbox at the bottom left. Size this to your liking, move the things around, and then once you're done, simply head back to the leftmost monitor, and then hit back, and then head back into the game. How to remove the steering wheel, maximizing the immersion. Now this is personal preference, but for me, whenever I'm racing, I don't like to see the in-game steering wheel. So hit escape, head to vehicle config. Now we're gonna to need to head to the leftmost screen again. We've changed displays now. Head to parts, and then you wanna type in steering. Under steering wheel, click the eye icon and click it. This will now make it disappear. Click back, head back into the game. We'll head back to the center monitor now. And as you can see, the steering wheel is gone. Magic. So, if all things have gone well, you should have been able to take your single screen vehicular mayhem and multiply it by a factor of three. If you like this content, please hit all the buttons down below, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I will see you very, very soon. Take care. Bye for now.